Hey guys, my name is Zach. I'm Dean. Welcome to this week's episode of Collecting Weekly. This is the weekly podcast where my friends and I talk about the things that matter the most to us this week in collecting. That's right. We have NYCC to talk about, the Joker to talk about. We got some tax stuff to talk about. But before we do all that, Dean, I think we should start off with our favorite segment. Would you like to kick us off? Yeah, are you ready? Yes. It's new, new this, this week. week. Uh, what did you get new this week? So... Obvi- you know, Elephant in the Room is Force Friday, or Triple Force Friday. So stupid. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, just a bunch of Star Wars stuff this week. Yeah. Uh, Rainer and I um, got in line extra early at uh, Target. The plan was to go to the mall and do ThinkGeek, uh, GameStop, and the Lego store, and possibly the Disney store. And um, we were just thinking about it. And I was like, well, Target opens an hour before everyone else. Why don't we go to Target? He's like, okay, let's go to the Target by the mall. That way we're right there. I was like, I have a feeling everyone's going to go to that Target. Yeah. I was like, let's go to this one. It's kind of out of the way. No one's going to go. Sure enough, no one's there. For the first like 45 minutes, we're in line. And then by the time the doors opened, there was maybe like eight people online. It was a real small kind of thing. So uh, Rainer and I were the first in line. So I picked up uh, uh, the Carbon Mandalorian, um, the Boba Fett Pop. Yeah. And I think that's all I got at uh, Target. And then I was like, all right, let's get to GameStop because they're going to open in less than an hour. So we went to the GameStop at the Quarry Market over here, and first in line again, no one showed up. One other guy showed up, and he was there for uh, Funko Pops from some show. It wasn't even Star Wars related, so I was like, cool, no no, uh, no uh, contest here. Yeah. And Rainer and I were the only ones <clears throat> there for Star Wars, and we both got the Commander Fox Black Series. It looks pretty good, honestly. Very cool. Yeah. I get all the clones, all well, the commanders. In I don't just buy like the regular clones in the black series. But um, and then I picked up a Robotech figure. Uh, just one of those uh, Toy Nami three point seven five. Yeah, they're like oh the 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 pilots. Yeah, well, I picked a Min May. I already had Rick Hunter, and I picked a Min May. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> So, uh, new this week, we obviously got in our new equipment. Yes. We got new microphones. We have an external recorder. Links up perfectly with the camera that we got earlier this year. And I have to say, we got through 69 episodes with the Yeti, which is here on the table. That's a beautiful piece of equipment. This, yeah, that, that thing served us very well. We started with an iPad and... <laughs> About 10 episodes in, we upgraded to the Yeti, which was, you know, probably the best $80 we spent on the show, Right, I think. And, you know, tech issues with our computer were the main reason why we upgraded. If I think if the computer was still running well, we didn't really have a need to upgrade. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad that we finally did. We're on to a uh, Zoom external recorder. And uh, like I said, we picked up some mics, picked up some... Uh, drum stands and pop filters and a bunch of other equipment. So uh, that was kind of the only thing that I really got. Uh, Manny and yourself were able to help me pick up the Mandalorian. Uh, I was not participating in Force Friday. Very confusing. Like, I guess, is it a midnight thing? Is it because the first Force people... Friday was a midnight <clears throat> thing? And that's how you met, I think, Manny in the first place. Uh, yes and no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so a lot of people were complaining about that, that they went out at midnight. And but it wasn't until the... Yeah, Walmart was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Target's closed at like 9. Yeah. Most places are closed by 9. Toys R Us isn't open anymore. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were really confused on where to go and what to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I guess I'm either just a veteran or I just know just to do it in the morning. Yeah. Um... Uh, it also didn't help that Rainer was on top of his game and was like calling everybody and finding out who's doing what. Damn. Uh, 
Um, was there promotional material? Like, did you get like a poster or a pin? I remember no, the first one they used yeah, to do that. Yeah, they used to do that. Even Toys R Us did that up until their last one. Yeah. Um, well, well, let's let's talk about that because I know we said we had that on the show sheet for later, but this is the first like big Force Friday since Toys R Us is closed. Yeah. How do you what do you think about it? It's um, it's weird. It, I don't know. It's just like it felt more special to go to Toys R Us. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. It's just yeah, because the thing and... is, like, Walmart and Target, like, they're obviously trying to fill parts of the niche that Toys R Us had. Like, they're getting McFarlane. They're carrying NECA. Right. But there's something to be said about going to a toy store. Right. And uh, with other toy people. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember the first Force Friday, it was in a Walmart, but it's like you're in a Walmart. So it's like there's other things and you're just kind of like being sectioned off. And then yeah. I remember the first Force Friday, like at midnight, then they opened the toy aisle. Yeah. But that's different than this. I, my, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my experience at Target was very similar to that of what I would have at Toys R Us. Everybody formed a line. We all four actually formed a line on our own. No one asked us to do it. Yeah. But the lady walked out. She's like, hey, if you're here for Force Friday, we have it set up in the back. Walk back there, single file, don't fucking push. And we have a display set up. And it was nice because, like I said, we formed our own line. But there was like four or five people that were there just for Target. But it's like, so is this guy in line because he just wants to buy a bar of soap? Or is he... Yeah, exactly. Or is that what he assumes we all think? And then he's going to cut the line and run to the front? Like, you don't know who's your <laughs> enemy Yeah. Uh, in the line at Target. As opposed to Toys R Us, you know everybody's there yeah. for that one thing. Or Toys R Us, rather. Yeah. Um, but I didn't have a bad time. I had a pretty good time. Uh, Target seemed to handle it pretty well. Yeah. Real quick in the background, we got Richard in the chat. We hey. got Fern in the chat. We got Merv in the chat. Those are all sweet angels. We have Greg in the chat and Sean in the chat. So well, thank you guys for tuning into our inaugural, Sean's pretty cool. inaugural XLR uh, <laughs> testing. Greg is a weirdo. <laughs> Greg is an angel, dude. That dude is hilarious. I love Greg. Um, yeah, so I, like I said, I haven't really gotten a chance to open the Mandalorian, but I did pick yeah. up some paint to customize him. Actually, I was like, uh, going to complain about the Mandalorian. The figure. I got the carbon one. So let me let me give my thoughts on that real quick, and then I'll right. let you go in. I think it is so weird that there was three because was it three versions of every figure or just three of the Mandalorian? Because I've seen the white box and the black box. Three versions of every figure. I think that is so stupid. I think Star Wars or has even if it's just the Mandalorian. It's the Mandalorian, the sister, <clears throat> the Sith trooper. And I think that's it. Those are the only ones that have the carbon. That's the Amazon, Target, and GameStop. Yeah. Exclusives. Um, I, I feel like Star Wars has been... It doesn't need that. Like, first release figures. I and, didn't get it. It's, and then, like, it the, 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 the carbonized, which were, like, really weird repaints. Metallic like, colors. I, and, I don't know. I just... I think it looked cooler on the armor, armored characters. Like, the Sith Trooper looks really cool. Uh-huh. And so does the sister. Yeah. Um, the Mandalorian, his helmet looks cool. His armor, But then you get to his pants, you're like, why would his pants be metallic? Yeah. It, it is pretty. I, re I really do like it. Um, out of the box, immediately, I replaced the cape. I took apart an old Kylo Ren figure and cut it up and glued it. I don't know if you could see. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Nice. Yeah, for what it is. If someone ever makes a nice one, I'll buy it. But. We got uh, Matt DeHoyas in the chat also. Hey. Sorry, Matt. You, you, when you pop up on my screen, it just says Facebook user, so I can't tell who that is. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't really get it. it. It just seems odd. And, and like I said, they're all on the shelf at the same time, so it's like, yeah. was this? did this one roll off the factory well, that's, first? That's or? why I kind of wasn't in a rush to like run over there and grab everything. Because uh -huh. I was like, there's these figures... There's three versions of most of them out. So what's the point in rushing to grab it? Yeah. Um, I was more excited for the Commander Fox because he was a GameStop exclusive. And my the store we went to only had two. 
Yeah. But, so I get this Mandalorian figure. It's the carbon one. And, you yeah, know, check it, out. it looks great. But the paint, if you rub it wrong, it comes off. This is the carbonized one. Yes. The carbonized effect comes off. Yeah. Like, look at the gun. Like, anywhere his hand goes, that oh, the peg that goes into his back, the, the paint just, like, peels away. You think it's like that on the regular one? I, I guess, like, the non-carbon one? I don't think one. so. I guess you could let me know, but... Dude, I'm going to repaint mine tonight. I'm so excited. I got all the paint ready. I'm pretty excited for you. I want to see what that looks like. But, um, I mean, there's no... Oh, sorry. There's no durability in, like, I guess, like, the leg armor or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I noticed it in the gun. Maybe because it's a softer plastic. And then, like, everything's touched. And then you get to the shoes, and it's just, like... Not carbonized? It's like this weird brown plastic. Like, why didn't they touch that up? Everything else is touched. I don't know. It's a great figure. I really it looks like awesome. It, but <laughs> it just seems to be left to be desired. More to be desired. Let's get into uh, NYCC. So we we broke this news last episode. It was minutes before we started to record, and The Mandalorian was shown. Uh, and it looked really, really fantastic. Uh we now have a pre-order of this, and I think this is a figure that has a potential to be one of those figures that skyrockets. Mm-hmm. It's it's an all-fabric outfit for the most part, so you're going to be able to pose it however you want it without fear of of that, you know, the clothing peeling or whatever. Mm-hmm. It does have some pleather on it, which, you know, could be a thing, but it just looks... I mean, you mentioned it last show. It just lo- looks like a dude in a suit. Yeah. And I know that Hot Toys has come a long way with their Boba Fett. I think the Return of the Jedi wasn't that great. Empire was fantastic. And this seems to be building on the things that they learned. And the thing that I like about this figure is he doesn't seem to have a lot of the things that made Boba Fett's uh, figure really annoying. Mm -hmm. All the extra hoses, the jetpack. It seems like a very basic figure that I think they're going to absolutely nail. I have a theory. What is your theory? I think he's Boba Fett? I think he's Boba Fett. Ooh. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I was, I was, I was thinking about it the other day because I put them on pre-order, and I was just looking at so, it. So, so you mentioned the other day you went to go put it on pre-order. Where'd you pre-order it at? At Stevens. I just lied you to you. You fucking liar. <laughs> he said I went to go put it on pre-order, and I was like, "You mean you went to the website?" And you're like, "No." I was like, "You put it on Stevens?" No. And I was like, "No." <laughs> he, Stevens does twelve months. Uh, yeah, it's like twenty bucks a month or something because it comes out October next year, I think. Ooh, I need to hit up Steven. Yeah, dude, 20 bucks a month, that's nothing. I spend more than that on Taco Bell. At one time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I drop 20 bucks a Taco um, Bell, no problem. But yeah, it's like, okay, I just think it's going to be Boba Fett. Because, like, we haven't gotten a name, no face reveal. We know who the actor is, but not that it's important, but we don't really know what Boba Fett looks like. Yeah. Technically. Matt says right. that he's too tall to be Boba Fett. He is a clone. But I just feel like the show's going to end and he's going to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm fucking Boba Fett this whole time. That'd be wild. That'd be crazy. Here we have uh, the Mandalorian. I almost said Boba Fett. The Mandalorian standing next to IG-11. And IG-11 looks like a really good figure, too. I don't think it's going to be the most durable figure, uh, but I definitely think it's going to be a nice figure. Uh, love these little leather tabards here. And these photos I mean, were uh, courtesy of Sideshow Collectibles. Did K2SO have any issues? Uh, so some people were saying with this figure, it doesn't look like he has any die cast. I'm not sure how they're telling that. But K2 did have die cast, that's my understanding. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, IG-11 looks really... Because that's kind of like a similar lanky, metallic kind of... Some people are saying that potentially Hot Toys used some of the assets from Sideshow to make this. Which uh, I think Sideshow has ac- access to the actual props, so... If that's the case, they uh, probably would have nailed it. Here's the Mandalorian here. This is uh, it comes with a really nice diorama base, some hands, uh, a few accessories, the guns. The only problem I see with this figure down the road mm-hmm. is inevitably when the show becomes hella popular, they'll mm-hmm. definitely make one like for a later season, like if there's outfit changes or something. Yeah. But eventually getting a head sculpt. If we ever see a head. Right. Which... I don't want to. Yeah, That's what makes I feel it like cool. It, like yeah. that was my biggest problem with like Robocop, um, Judge Dredd, like the first one with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Is like eventually they take the helmet off. It's like, well, I mean, that's kinda of what makes it cool. 
But in like the new Dread movie with Carl Urban, he never takes it off. And it's so cool. That's kind of what I hope, too. Like, you never see him without yeah. the helmet. Uh, but I don't know. I really like that actor. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Because I, I would prefer if he never took the helmet off, but I also wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Uh, here we have IG-11, the uh, glam shots. Interesting to note, the IG-11 has a waist grabber instead of a crotch grabber. And on the stand at uh, NYCC, it looked a little awkward. Because it's just kind of wrapping around. Yeah. There's not a lot of substance there. I hate waist grabbers. They ruin yeah. everything. So uh, IG-11 retails for 251 The Mandalorian is 243 And those are releasing October to December 2020. Uh, at NYCC, we also have better pictures here of the First Order Snowtrooper. And I have to say, I hate this design. I guess the First Order is rocking those uh, shawls with no arms. It just, it seems like Kylo has one. This guy has one. I guess this is the fashion sense. It's just sense. a fucking snowtrooper with a cape. Who cares? Yeah. No one bought those figures anyway. I can't see this one selling particularly well. No. Uh, we also got to see these figures, which we haven't seen them in a little bit. Uh, we have the uh, Utapau. Utapau clone trooper and Batman and Robin. Now, how come Robin has nipples, but Batman doesn't? I don't know. A lot of people seem to be complaining about this uh, Robin crotch, crotchal region here. Yeah. Um, it was packing. It's packing that schmeat, man. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Putting the he dick was, in Dick Grayson. I mean, he was in the circus. How do you think he got there? <laughs> oh, boy. We also got to see Mysterio, and we got some better detail on the dome. It looks really good. It looks like there might be some sort of structure inside the dome to give it this effect but i really like the way that looks is there a, a seam on there of course if the, it wouldn't be mysterious if there wasn't now dean this was really exciting we got to see the uh yes. uzaru vegeta from the saiyan saga I'm so stoked. and uh, if it ever comes out it, if it ever comes out is the first thing tomashi nations has a <clears throat> bad habit of showing figures that never come out their star wars line is huge yeah and they've released like a third of it yeah Mervyn says uh, they should have gotten a Poe Dameron in a flight suit instead of a uh, snowtrooper. I think I agree. Yeah. Uh, and, but is he flying in this movie? It doesn't look like I, it. I, I haven't really watched that much of it. But, I don't think they have uh, One thing to note about this Uzaru is I thought it was really short at first. But people are comparing the uh, height of those extension rods. And, and there's a really nice wide-angle shot. I actually don't have it on the show sheet. But the case was level with another case. And there was Gohan, um, the Mystic Color version, the recolor that they did, uh -huh. was standing straight up, and it was about as oh, tall as his legs. Mystic so Gohan. I thought you were saying Kid Gohan. No, no, that no, no, changes no. things. So but that means I was like, oh, like that means inches? this thing will be like twelve to fifteen inches upright. And if so, I think that's going to be an absolute must-have. Yeah, probably going to be expensive, but I think it's going to be a must-have. Uh, we also got to see a glam shot. This was posted on Adam Black's group. He runs one of the biggest... Uh, he's in our group in Ox. Yeah. He runs one of the biggest uh, figure arts groups in the United States. Oh, no way. And uh, someone somehow snuck this image. It's a glam shot of the uh, Uzaru Vegeta looking extra dope. It just seems... I don't know if they rushed this out or something, but it's like... It's a lot of damage in there for no detail. The more I look at it, the more I actually like it, but I... I do see what you're saying. Like, in the chest, like, put some fucking black wash in there. Something. It just... I don't know. It looks great. It's just like, why isn't it detailed? Yeah. Uh, we also got to see Captain Ginyu from Bandai, hey. which seems a little late, being that uh, the demoniacal one is already out. Right. The whole team is practically already out at this point. This one looks a lot better, though. And then we got to see the Bulma Capsule 9 oh, bike. that's so cool, dude. It's just going to be... That's a must. Especially if you get that first episode, Bulma. Dude. Hopefully it's in a pack together. Like a two-pack? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty great. And then uh, Azmus. I, now, I couldn't find any pictures of Azmus's booth. Uh, booth. I, I searched the entire internet, and I couldn't find any. But the day before NYCC, they showed uh, this teaser on the left, and it's Elrond. And on the right, it's the Twilight Ringwraith. And those are coming out Q4 2019. And then uh, today they teased a Ring Wraith, a re release of the Ring Wraith. So cool beans. we will see what those uh, yield, but I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, going forward, Sideshow put out a very interesting announcement. 
They're going to produce fine art prints and 3D collectibles celebrating the legendary rapper and Wu-Tang Clan founding member Old Dirty Bastard. Sideshow is a pop culture company, so this isn't totally out of left field, but in the uh, description they said they're making like some art shots, and then they also mentioned collectible figures. So I don't know what that means, if they're making a six scale ODB, or they're going to make, uh, like with Fluffy, they made like a vinyl uh, like statue, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that, but it's an interesting license to have. I have to say it's a very interesting license to have. Very niche. <clears throat> Are there any other rappers you'd like to see Sideshow tackle? Post Malone. Dude. <laughs> I, watched, yeah. I was Post watching him on uh, Jimmy Fallon. They went to Olive Garden. Uh-huh. That was so funny. What a guy. Oh, uh, but let's just let's think about because I know people are going to be like, he's not a real rapper. Uh, he's just a wonderful human being. He just seems like a cool dude. Um, any rappers I would like to see? Kanye would be cool. Old school Kanye. That's a little pre Kim K. No, oh. I like a, I like a Kim K though. Moving forward, <laughs> the Fison upgrade. Yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, six scale Joker. This is from Toys Era, and at the time of this recording, the pricing has not been released yet. And I have to say, this looks pretty sweet. So we have three head sculpts. We have the uh, the pistol, the flowers, the mask cigarette and it looks like a little bit of a diorama base yeah uh definitely got to give them props it looks like a pretty complete set uh my only complaint is that from i've only seen the movie once so don't quote me on this but i feel like the revolver's the wrong color i remember it it being black it's all black yeah uh so that could be the lighting in that picture but yeah it's definitely black you're right it could be the lighting uh but you know you get the uh the smiling face and then you get a on makeup face and I feel like the unmakeup face kind of is an outlier because he doesn't wear, he doesn't wear this suit with the the face. And there's already a company that makes a civilian set. And this, this set, at this point, from what we've seen, doesn't come with the civilian outfit. Mm-hmm. So it just seems kind of weird. I mean, it'd be nice to have an extra head. True. We can see here this is the smiling face. Uh, they really nailed it on this one. This is the unmasked portrait. And... Uh, I guess I had the smiling face in there twice. But I, I think that they they really, really nailed it. And the price, you know, depending on what it comes out at, I'm thinking like $230. Uh, which, For three head sculpts isn't terrible. Yeah, and a lot of people are saying that Hot Toys is going to make a six-scale figure of this. But because they shared the trailer, mm-hmm. Sideshow, or rather Hot Toys, Hot Toys will make this because the Hot Toys company shared the trailer. At this point, uh, there's a lot of rumors that Toys Era knows some behind-the-scenes stuff, and they're not going to make figures that Hot Toys is going to make. Case in point, Cable, Venom, uh, and the fact that they're releasing them seems to be the nail in the coffin for a lot of people. Now, at this point, we have Toys Era, we have M Toys, we have SW Toys. Seems like everyone in the third-party biz is giving us a Joker. So Uh I I almost think it'd be foolish for Hot Toys to make one because all these third-party figures are coming out Q4 this year q1 next year and a hot toys joker won't come out until you know q4 2020 hopefully there's no sequel we'll talk about this movie a little bit more later yeah um i don't know uh, hot toys also has a bad habit of fucking over dc collectors yeah so even if they showed a prototype i i wouldn't count on it coming out until the pre-order came out yeah, Fernando says the tailoring is not that great, to be honest. Hoping to see how Hot Toys does. Uh, Mervin says, how long before Hot Toys announces theirs? I don't think they're going to make one, man. There's so many third-party kits already, it's not even worth it for them. Yeah. Uh, Greg says he thinks it's going to come in at 180 to 190 uh, One really neat thing that was pre-ordered this week was the six-scale uh, Grant. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. This yeah. is by Chronicle Collectibles. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is coming in at two hundred and thirty dollars, releasing Q four two thousand twenty. And I have to say, this looks like a very average six scale figure. The tailoring looks a little off. Yeah, I was gonna Head say. Head sculpt looks a little soft. And the thing that really bothers me is, at least from these pictures, it seems like all the accessories are stuck to the hand that they go with. So the flare, you can see that there's a hand for the flare, there's a hand yeah. for the raptor claw, a hand for the raptor. And a second gloved hand to hold the raptor. And I don't like that. 
because sometimes with hands that are designed for one thing, you can pose them to look like something so totally real. different. Yeah. And not only that, but I feel like that the second head sculpt isn't really that different from the first one. Um, but, what, do you, what do you think about this, Dean? Is the second head sculpt with a hat and the other one's without a hat? That's what it looks like. Oh, maybe that's what it is. I, I didn't. Or does the that. hat come on and off? It looks like the hat comes on and off. Maybe you're right. Maybe that is the difference. Um, um, but if so, that's a... I was thinking it looked baggy, the clothes. His clothes are pretty baggy in the film, though. I was going to say, if you're an archaeologist, you got to get deep down in the dirt. you got to be up and down. You probably want a lot of fabric so you're not like ripping your pants and shit. I um, think the one thing that can make this maybe a hit is a diorama base. Yeah. But Chronicle showed it off, and it looked like it was just on a generic black yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, I don't like the <clears throat> property enough to even think about buying this, so Yeah. Um I know for someone like you, I was excited when I saw it, but now that you're talking about it, it sounds like you're Yeah, not for, for me, it. like I have my favorite character from that film, right. the Rex, in tenth scale. Yeah. So to get a six scale grant while while being really cool, the idea of that it it won't fit something that I've already invested quite a bit of money in. True. And uh, Iron Studios does make a 10th scale grant in the iconic uh, flare pose Ooh. to complement this Rex. And so I don't really think that I need... How much is that? Like 100 bucks. Oh. But, but the thing is, like I thought about it, but I'd, I'd rather have uh, John Hammond and a Velociraptor than recreate that scene with Grant. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that is my thoughts on that. Now let's look at the raptor. They they also put up a raptor. Uh, here's another few shots of Grant holding the raptor. I think the raptor baby looks kind of weird. Yeah, see, that's it almost the, looks like it should stand on the ground. Yeah, but in his hands, it just looks really weird. See, that's the head sculpt without the hat, isn't it? Maybe you're right. Uh, they also put up a Velociraptor. Now, dude, in my opinion, now now first things first, the raptor's 450 Q4 2020. Grant is 230 Q4 2020. I feel like they should have led the line with Grant and Malcolm, uh, Ian Malcolm, because the Raptor is great, but it's such an old, like if you're not a six scale company, start off easy with Grant and Alan. Yeah, two 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 relatively simple characters. characters yeah. Because this Raptor is it has a lot of features. The toe claw articulates. The hands swap out. The jaw opens. And that neck, I though. certainly don't think it looks terrible, but the neck. Mm-hmm. You're exactly right. The neck it looks, looks weird. pretty bad. I remember when you posted a picture of just the head, and they were showing that the jaw open and closed. Yeah. I was like, why does that neck look like it goes into a body? Like, it just seems like a weird thing. And the next thing I know, it's this. Yeah. It's just, like, very odd looking. Yeah. Um... You know, I guess if they have this raptor, they technically can repaint it for blue. Um, but it just seems like it seems like a cool figure. The articulation is also not well hidden on the toe. It's just like yeah. a big ass peg. Now they uh, there is a pre order bonus. It's the uh, hard hat and the baton from the opening of the film, which I think is really neat. Mm-hmm. But again, I feel like this figure really needs a diorama base. Like, you can't have a raptor on a boring black I don't think that thing would stand on its own, though. It's got to have a base. No, it has to have a base, but I'm saying give it a diorama base. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this thing is... I, I highly doubt it. I don't even know how a base would work. Yeah, right? Where do you... You have to put it between its chest. arms, yeah. Yeah. So... Again... Well, I don't know, maybe hard, the tail's really heavy in it, actually. Yeah. Hard, hard pass for me, but... Really? You know, at oh, four wow. at four fifty, I know Dylan was saying on our podcast that if it was less than a thousand, he'd strongly consider it. And I thought it was going to be up there. I thought it was going to be seven fifty, six fifty. Yeah, you, you thought it was going to be way more. Um, but they really, I think they really nailed the price point. But at the I same know our time, friend Eric was less than pleased with the price. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you can get the amber collection, which is like a six inch scale Raptor. For like twenty bucks, there's no way this would be forty bucks, right? But you know, I don't know. I think they did have access to Stan Winston's maquettes or like the scans from the maquettes. Yeah. 
So I know this is going to be extremely accurate, but I just am not as big of a fan of this as I'd like to be. And that's disappointing, you know? Yeah. So that is what, uh, that is what it is. So let's, uh, there's a better shot of the baton and the uh, hard helmet. Now, new releases, uh, Hot Toys released today, the quarter scale Darth Vader. And I have to say this thing looks incredible. I still think that there's some things that they didn't learn from the one six scale one, specifically the lightsaber holding hand with the weird wrist thing that they did on the Empire Strikes Back Vader. Yeah. And the pleating. I think the pleating just looks terrible. Other than that, this looks like an absolute home run. I think the base is a little gaudy. It's on like a pedestal type base. Like this is a huge figure and then you're gonna put it on like a huge base. Is it almost like that that <laughs> statue where he's like walking downstairs? Um it's like a base, like, you know, those, like, hexagon base or uh-huh. whatever, like, the ones that are, like, a triangle or whatever. Uh-huh. On top of, like, a Star Wars, uh, oops, bump the mic, on top of a Star Wars, like, logo thing, and then, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's yeah, just, like, very good. Uh, I don't know if I got a picture of the base. No, I didn't. Um, it's just kind of awkward looking, just take my word for it, but the, the Sebastian Shaw head sculpt looks really good, uh, and it seems to be fairly flexible as a figure. Yeah. Uh, the price was... Uh, Kind of wild. Uh, Dylan says, I'm just happy we're getting a six scale Raptor. I never thought this would happen ever. And uh, Greg says the stand would go between the legs. Mervin says the Amber collection is $25. But yeah, I think this might be the best Vader figure out of the box released. Period. Wow. But again, quite a quite a price point. How much is it? Five? Uh, I think it's six. Oof. Can you pull it up? No. No? Okay. Well. Uh, <laughs> Bucky Barnes was released and... Seems to be a lot of dislike for this, and I don't really know why. I don't... Normally, normally I am one to... Bash. Bash. The second you get a chance to. Maybe I'm being bashful, but... <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. The hair looks really crisp. Uh, the disintegrating arm effect looks terrible. I will say that. But overall, I think it looks like a good figure. There's been a lot of really cool posing that people have done where they have rockets stealing the... Uh, yeah, about 570. The, the, the Vader's 570? Yeah, yeah, around there. Yeah, I was thinking 600 shipped. Um, it looks like a fine figure to me. I have the Civil War buggy. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's very boring. Yes. It's a very vanilla figure. Yes. This doesn't seem to add anything. Mm-hmm. It's also very boring. Um... I I don't think I could be less excited for a figure. <laughs> oh, I could. No, I just like I don't care. One, Bucky's completely useless in that movie. Yeah, and also in in the game and pretty much every movie he's in, he's pretty much useless. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, why would I don't know? Why would you want a figure <laughs> of this guy? Mm-hmm. I've. If I could sell my Civil War one, I probably would, but I don't think it's worth anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of like, ugh. Yeah, I, uh, I have nothing good or bad to say about this, with the exception of the uh, disintegrating arm. I think that it just... It's a cool concept. Could have been executed a little bit better. Edited, the photo editing looks great, but when you see it, like, in person or like a shot where they haven't put the extra effects on it looks like shit yeah i agree no but like literal shit like it does look very like very like okay uh greg says cap needs a bro and mervin says the winter soldier is the one to have um I don't know. I'm uh, not a big. I'm not a big. That Winter guy. Soldier is falling apart. Pieces. Uh, people have been posting pictures of their like, the outfit is just like, f- like the pleather is flaking. And, yeah, I like the Civil War one because it's all like cloth that's not gonna deteriorate, uh-huh. and it's got the classic silver arm with the red star. Yeah, uh, we have Stan Lee in imminent arrival from Sideshow, and that is. Uh, I guess it's cool for people in the United States. I didn't order this figure, but I know that uh, Steven was saying a lot of people were hitting him up about it, actually. So, really? Mm-hmm. That's cool. I don't yeah. know. I just, 
If I was going to get a Stan Lee, it wouldn't be this one. Mm-hmm. I guess it's just kind of like a, a not a throwaway scene because it's actually really funny, but it's just like a one scene wonder. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I guess the uh, Wu toys came out and the Stanleys coming out as well. Uh, one thing that really surprised me, Dean, was uh, and and this photo is from Sherm Junior on OSR. Uh, it is the Brienne of Tarth six scale figure, and a lot of people that ordered this from Sideshow said that it's like pretty much delayed, you know, for quite a while. Yeah. And um, I know Cody was saying that he was really upset with Sideshow, but it's like it's not really Sideshow's fault. I mean, you know, the company releases them and they ship them, and then you know we receive them at at that point. Um, Sherm, however, got his direct. Uh, from the manufacturer, and that's why he got us so quick. But I have to say, Brienne of Tarth, I think, might be the best Game of Thrones figure that I've ever seen. This figure looks incredible. And and it could be uh, Sherm's photo-taking abilities, but damn, this looks fantastic. Dean, what do you think? <sighs> My heart. Mi corazón. She's beautiful. Everything that you would want, and more. Dude, that pose, the lighting, everything about that figure in that particular photo. Do you have her on order? Is No, I probably should. Dude, you need to because after this picture, you know that this figure is going to be ridiculous. When does she come out? I think Cody was saying it's like a two-month delay, like November. Well, it's next month. Or a one-month delay, rather. <sighs> Shit. I don't know. I don't know if I can afford it now. Was she like two hundred? Uh, something like that, probably. Maybe if I get my PayPal down, I could put it on that. It looks really good. Uh, so yeah, Brienne of Tarth was released, and and this will probably hit greater distribution soon. At this point, this was the first picture that we saw of this being released. Yeah. Um, so I imagine the next month or so we'll start to see more people have this figure in hand. Oh, maybe Steven could get it for me. You might be able to get it for you. Oh, I should ask him. Steven, if you're listening to this, I love you. <laughs> what a guy. Now, Jazz Inc. Dioramas did have a few releases. They released their uh, Millennium Falcon cargo hold, which we have a photo here by Jose uh, C. With uh, I think these are sideshows. What is this game called, Dean? Dejeric? Hollow uh, Chess? You know what? I, it's like one thing I don't know about Star Wars. Yeah, the uh, Hollow Chess figurines there on R2-D2. This looks straight out of the movie. Looks really good. It's fantastic. Uh, the Bespin Gantry. This is a photo by Craig Walker, and this is the ultimate scale Bespin Gantry by Jazz Inc. Dioramas. And uh, both of these are actually available for sale. And Yost, I talked to him today, he also said that they released the, I think it's the True Scale Gantry, which is a little bit smaller than the one here that Craig has. Uh, but that is uh, really, really neat stuff. Uh, he also told me that the work is continuing on the Vulture. We have an exploded view here of some of the different articulated pieces. And uh, here's another picture of some of the 3D rendering of the... I think he's calling it the Iron Scavenger. Uh, so that's looking really cool. Those are for pre I think it's $500 for the, the Vulture. And then he said in the next... Uh, I think he said by the end of the month, he's going to release the Land Speeder, which uh, we talked about on our show many moons ago. Uh, but he is right on schedule releasing this, and it looks really, really fantastic. I think he recently redid the Bubble Dome, and that's looking pretty good. And then he also has the Hoth diorama that's releasing at the end of October as well. So these are all looking really good. I know Greg has some stuff coming in. Uh, so when he gets them in, I'm hoping that he'll bring them to out to to the studio. I think he was getting the cargo hold. So uh, Greg, if you're listening, I know you are. Bring it over to the studio. We'd love to have you. We'd love also, to check it out. relax. <laughs> yeah, Greg, calm down. <laughs> um, Legio Studios, Legio 7, released two head sculpts. We have Nien Nun. How do you say it? Nien Num? Nub. Nien Nub. Isn't it? It's like, I have it written out I here. I think it's Nien Nub. It's N-I-E-N-N-U-N-B. Nien Nunb? Numb? I don't know. Okay. Nien Nunb. I'm going to say it really fast. This is the Mexican guy from Star Wars. Yeah, the Mexican Sorry. 8 from Star Wars. <laughs> it was released. And then this one was really exciting. The Grand Admiral Thrawn 
This is based on the Rebels uh, artwork, and that's, the artwork is uh, from the books as well. Yeah. And uh, I talked to Legio, and he said that he was willing to sell me a sculpt unpainted. My wife is a fantastic painter. Mm. And I got this sculpt coming in. Wow. Yeah, he, it was a small deposit down to secure the spot while he makes the... I don't know if he's 3D printing them. I imagine he's resin casting them. Very cool. But Victoria is going to paint it for me, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. Nice. Dude, very so exciting. if you want uh, either of these head sculpts, Legio 7 Workshop on Facebook, hit them up. They make some really fantastic stuff. And these are uh, indications of the quality of work that he does. I'm very yeah. excited. The Thrawn comes with hands and uh, the shoulder bars. Though I still really like the ones that Sean made me Yeah. from uh, Watto Scrapyard. Yeah. So shout we're going Sean. to, uh, yeah, shout out Sean. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, we already talked Force Friday, but Unicron. <sighs> Dude, I'm about to fucking go off. Last Tuesday, mysteriously, Hasbro added like 1,200 pre-orders from international collectors, which is a blow to bullshit. Saturday, about 7 p.m., they hit goal. And almost immediately afterwards, the little bar on the bottom changed to just 8,000 plus. It was no longer an actual count. An exact count. And Dean, you made a really good point because up into like Monday, Tuesday of last week, they were still announcing things that they were working on. Now, when you have trends, you can kind of say like, you can forecast like, oh, we're going to make our goal at if this rate continues by this day. Maybe they knew they were going to hit goal. Like when we hit 10,000 views, I knew almost exactly like a week before that we were going to hit 10,000 for this year by a certain day and a certain time. Okay. And we were right. I mean, our, our trends uh, were accurate. But, but it seems like they the it seems place. like they really wanted to make this. And it, for them to celebrate hitting goal, I mean, that's a thing, but they also had to extend it one. They had to add international orders whatever that meant it, it just seems like okay then make it like you know you shut down zeta toys to make this forcing people to get your figure which i frankly don't think is better it just it's just like okay that's a thing that happened yeah it's what, what do you think dude like you said, one, they had to extend it. Two, they were, they haven't been close at all this entire time. And then, like, the last week, all of a sudden, all these fucking people come out of nowhere. It's like, you fucking, you're, you're lying to everybody. You just wanted to fucking make this thing, which isn't a problem. Just fucking make it. Don't force people to pay for it and then wait. If you're just going to make it, just make it. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. It's like you want... I don't know. It You're making the people pay for it when you could have just done it and sold it to them anyway. Yeah. I have to agree with you. It just... It just seems odd. I just... I hate this concept. I hate everything about Aslab. Like, the concept, the time frame... I will never give my money to Aslab, no matter how much I want the thing. I'll just say that much right now. It's very noble of you. And I wanted that fucking sail barge, dude. <laughs> he really did. We have a local comic store that has one, and every mm. time he looks at it, he gets a little single tear in his eye. Dude, that's so amazing. Uh, eBay sent out a notice. I saw this posted on a few different groups that in November 2019, they're going to begin taxing, uh, of course, like obviously states where sales tax is required. And it really changes the game because, you know, Big Bad Toy Store, uh, the place where we got this equipment from, eBay is now charging sales tax. I imagine Mercari is probably going to start charging sales tax. Um, um, I don't think so because you're buying from individuals. Well, eBay, you're buying from an individual. Yeah, but you could go to a flea market and buy something and not pay tax. It, that's something somebody already <coughs> owned that it's already paid taxes on and... You're yeah, kidding. but eBay charges tax. But there's people, there's stores on eBay. Those charge tax. Yeah. But individual sellers. I don't. 
Maybe they don't. I don't think so. I think if you're just like go like you and my you and me, if we just put up a figure for sale, I doubt they would charge tax. Um, I be ba- like based that, on everything that I read. It'd be it like is, going to a, like a garage sale and having to pay fucking tax on something. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, but there's no record of that sale. Yeah, but you don't have to pay taxes on something like that. Correct. But I'm saying in this case, I guess in because you're using business, a corporation, yeah, you're, you're you're buying it through this medium. That's stupid. I mean, I could understand BBTS because it's an actual store. Yeah, but eBay is that's so, really so stupid. Keep that thought in mind. I did some investigating. Okay. I sent Sideshow an email, and I said, uh, you know, my, my, I didn't include my first message, but essentially I said that. Um, you know, a lot of the websites that I purchased from are charging sales tax. And I wanted to know if Sideshow Collectibles would be charging sales tax to Texas. And I was told that we are only required to charge tax when shipping within the state of California. And I kind of doubled up and just said, like, this is what our state legislature is saying. This is what I understand and I asked if they were, if this was something that maybe went into effect in November or December, and I was told that they had no foreseeable plans. Now, the Texas State Legislature does have an exception for businesses selling less than $500,000 in a 12-month period to each state. I bet they make more than that. Potentially, Sideshow could be claiming that exemption, or potentially, this is what Kim said, Kim said that side shows eating the tax and just not charging you up front you know saying that they're charging you at this point there's no way for us to know but i know kim oh are you are you saying like the figure comes in from hong kong at 190 they're charging you 260 and part of that is the tax, tax. yeah that's oh, what that would make sense that's maybe that could be the reason for the increases that we've been seeing lately but yeah. kim and Drayson, um He's not like a massive retailer by any means, um, but he pays sales tax on the things that he sells. Right. Uh, Stevens Collectibles, of course, sales tax. And it just seems odd that there would be that exemption for businesses importing less than 500000 You know what I mean? It just seems like that's a really high threshold to avoid tax. Now, I mean, 500000 what's eight? percent of five hundred thousand like that's that's money that's not like an insignificant amount of money yeah um yeah there's no way they're not paying tax forty thousand i don't know it just seems odd like i don't know if this exemption that that the legislature has claimed is like a permanent thing or at some point like the threshold will get lower and lower until right everyone's paying tax but it just doesn't it's just very weird. I just want to say this on the record. <laughs> taxation is theft. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, no taxation without representation. Dean, let's talk uh, spoiler-free about the Joker. No, dude. Spoilers here on out. We should do a spoiler cast. <laughs> like a spoiler Well, like discussion. we used to do with Game of Thrones. We should do that for movies. We can do that. Yeah. Not here, but like on its own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Like when I get home, we could just do it over StreamYard. I'm not doing that today. No, I, but um, I just meant like yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. In the future, we don't have to be here to do it. We could do it on StreamYard. Well, let's talk spoiler free. Okay, um, I guess. I really like that movie. It's a great movie. Obviously, not a fun movie. I wouldn't say that I was like. Only one other movie has made me feel that way. Really? Yeah. What movie? Um, Nightcrawler. I have not seen that movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, he's a fucking weirdo in that movie. Yeah, he's really creepy and really unsettling. Fantastic actor, dude. If and I love Jake Gyllenhaal, and he can make me feel that way. Yeah, amazing. I suggest watching that movie. Mm-hmm. But well, this movie, I was genuinely uncomfortable. Yeah, watching it. I will say that was horrible. There was a family that brought a baby and a kid, like a three-year-old kid, Jeez. to this film. 
That is horrifying. Yeah, my brother was asking me today. He's like, did you see? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, I can't wait to see it. I was like, don't let your kids watch it. Now, um, again, spoiler free, but a lot of people seem to dislike the use of the the name Joker. They think that this could have just been a movie about any yeah, person. Yeah, for sure. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Really? Let me hear your I thoughts. think if, if you made this in New York City and his name was... The Comedian? The Comedian. Uh-huh. Dude, this movie would have been insane. I think sometimes when you put a, a comic book or... I'll just say video game title to a movie. Uh-huh. It doesn't do that well. This obviously did fantastic. And it, really? I don't think it hurts the movie <clears throat> that it's Joker. But I feel like it would have done just as well if it was anything else. I really liked that it was called the Joker. It's just called Joker. Or Joker. It's like Watchmen. It's not the Watchmen. It's just Watchmen. I really like this movie. I felt like being... It for it to be a part of like the Batman universe, it's not really a part of like anyone BVS or Keaton, it's just like part of the Batman universe. Yeah, I think there were certain scenes and certain plot points that this movie really grabbed onto. That if it didn't have those things, those elements, those elements, I don't think. I mean, of course, it could have been filled in with other things. I don't think this is a spoiler just because it's in the trailer. But are you talking about the stuff with um, uh, Wayne? Thomas Thomas Wayne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that whole like the, the just the fact that you knew certain people. I feel that was and you like knew of certain people. Yeah, and and it was a very relevant film because of what's going on today. In, in like the world, mm-hmm. I just there's that line about you know the worst thing about having a mental illness is people expect you to act like you don't have one. Right. Dagger of a line. Um, I think that there's quite a few scenes in this film that people will study for film school. Just the shots, the uh, the score, the cinematography, the acting. Dude, the Joaquin score. Phoenix. If this movie doesn't win Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Score, the Oscars are useless. It is a sham. Dude, what did I tell you about Joaquin? Go back and listen to the episodes. Dude, I said it too. Joaquin can act. That boy rings it. I love Joaquin Phoenix. He's such a cool dude. But I mean, Commodus nailed it. Like This boy just brings it. And John this Cash movie nailed it. This movie was uh, really the good. Guy in Signs. I actually knocked dude, it out of the park. Get it? Baseball boom, reference. Baseball reference. <laughs> I uh, I talked to Jesse yesterday. Oh, okay. Jesse. I actually talked and to him yesterday too. Really? Yeah. What are y'all talking about? Uh, he was at uh, Tim Hortons. I was like, "Are you in Canada?" He's like, "No, I'm in Mexico." I was like, "They have Tim Hortons and other places in oh, Canada." I don't know. He was in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, he said he's got some big things in the pipeline. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but he said that once they get going, he might be able to uh, come back to the show. Yeah, so, dude, I'm, I'm so excited. That dude is ripped. If you thought dude, he, he was... posted, dude, he posted a picture of his dude. silhouette against like a, a window or something. Dude, was... if you thought he was big before, boy, it's Jack, a fucking beef eating boy, big some bitch, dude. <laughs> he's huge. Look, like, goddamn. Justin? I, Justin? Miss, I fucking miss that guy. I really miss him. And uh, he had mentioned about this film that he really loved it. Yeah. I was like, dude, I fucking wish you could be here t- today, tomorrow with today. Yeah. To talk about it because it, it was so good. And I know he was really looking forward to it. Yeah. And I think it's really good for DC Studios. I know they've been kind of pooped on for a while, but it seems like they've made some pretty good movies back to back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Shazam was really good. This movie was really Aquaman good. Aquaman was solid. Uh, yeah, Aquaman. I know this. Suicide Squad. Uh, uh, not so much. But. Well, we got the other one coming out. What's it called? Birds of Birds Prey. Birds of Prey. And then Suicide, have, Suicide Squad 2. Have not seen. I haven't watched the trailer. No, Suicide Squad is a reboot. It's not a sequel. Really? Yeah, it's totally new people except for what's her face? Margo. Is the Joker in there? New Joker? I don't know if the Joker's in there, but uh, mm. Deadshot is. Um, it's uh, Idris Elvis. Yeah. You drove this. Unless it is a sequel, that. and Will Smith was just like, I'm not doing that. That's what I understood it to be. Oh, okay. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I, I heard it was, what's his face? Uh, 
James Gunn, and he was totally redoing it. Yeah. I don't know, man. I we'll see. We'll see. I have to say, this movie, and this is just my opinion. Right. I haven't seen every film released Everyone's this year. Everyone's entitled to their own wrong opinion. This was the best movie I have seen this year. Full yeah. stop. Obviously, I think Endgame was the most fun movie I've seen this year. Yeah. But purely as a film, in terms of quality, this was the best film that I've seen this year. Yeah, for Barn sure. I, um, Stay tuned. We'll do a Joker uh, spoiler cast in a few weeks or in a week or something like that. Yeah, give week. everyone time to see it. Yeah, so that is that. Dean, let's get into Grinds My Gears. Ooh. I don't think we've had a Grinds My Gears in a few weeks. I've been sick. <laughs> I've been... Uh, you know not really Grinds My Gears? People are trying to pass off Hasbro as a sideshow. <laughs> not toys. <laughs> All right, so this is what Grinds My Gears. Okay. Now, Dean, we see this... We've seen this, like, a lot lately in our group that we admin the bin. Okay. We admin a lot of groups together. <laughs> now, let, let me let me preface what I'm about to say. We actually really do. <laughs> when I was setting up StreamYard for Facebook streaming, it was like, all these groups we admin, but we need to scroll. <laughs> anyway, so um, we are in what's called Facebook Community Leadership Circle San Antonio. <gasps> We're actually, I'm trying to get Dean a seat, but in October, end of October, I'm going to Facebook Austin headquarters with other community leaders. I'm trying to get Dean a seat. But she we keep sending me an invite to the things. I'm like, do you want me to go or don't? Oh, I think she's just doing everybody at once. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But anyway, so, so we, part of what we do is we learn tools and how to analyze metrics and how to create campaigns and build communities. Okay. And one thing that we've been taught is how the feed works. Now, two years ago, Facebook groups were organized in chronological order. So the most recent things were at the top. Now, the feed kind of works like that still, where some posts that are most recent can show up on the top. But a lot of it depends on your browsing history on Facebook, depends on the things that you like, the things that you interact with, the things that you comment on. And those are all mashed together in my wall, like what I can see on my group feed for Ox or Tashi or OSR will be different than your wall, be right. different than Manny's wall. It'll be different. Everyone's wall is completely different. But that being said, a lot of people seem to think that posting your sales post every day makes it more visible. Really, all it does is if someone sees your post, that means they fit your algorithms match. And you're just going to show that same post to those same people. And it's super fucking annoying. We have to delete these posts in the background in our groups because they're repetitive. They break the rules, you know. But I see it on all the groups. Same people posting, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, those people may make the sale. But they're not making the sale because they posted it 20 times. A lot of times they're lowering the price. And someone who's already seen it says, that's the price that I want it for. But you're not really getting that many more new eyes on your post right. by reposting it. And we tell people all the time, edit your post with a new price and type bump. Everyone can see your original price, the price that is now, and everyone that's already commented on it gets a notification. It's much more effective to do it that way. But people seem to want to, um, I, I call it polluting the feed. With, I call it being a fucking idiot. Yeah, there was a guy uh, in one of the groups, and I'm not going to mention his name, but we went through, do it. We went through uh, do it. the feed. Tell me his name. And because... Our uh, algorithms Tell match up. Right I'm about now. to mute you. <laughs> it's <been> so annoying. <laughs> uh, because our algorithms matched up, I saw six posts of the same item. Some even just ten hours apart. Super Which annoying. Which is against the rules. In most groups, yes. Yeah. Uh, really annoying, and it really grinds my gears. So what have we learned here? Just If you're going to post something, just edit your post. Bump it up. Do what Greg does. 
What does Greg do? Greg does that. He edits. Oh yeah, posts. Greg is is a prime example. And bumps. Yeah, it's, I see his posts all the time, <clears throat> and there's a figure on there I, I really want, really bad. And every time he bumps, I'm like, you fucking guy. <laughs> Jason Nelson says it should be by timestamps, activity, not any other algorithms needed. Yeah, Jason, I agree with you. Uh, but Facebook is so complicated now. It's not really the beast that it used to be. It's very, yeah, very complex. Mm-hmm. So let's talk, Dean. The Collecting Weekly Figure Awards, those are up on Ox. Nomination threads are open. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had a few people put up some nominations, but we need all your nominations. If you're a collector, if you're an Ox, you are doing the collector's community, yourself included, a disservice by not nominating figures because come uh, uh, voting season, I'm going to pull from what I have, and if your favorite figure isn't on the list, your favorite figure isn't on the list, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, get those voting threads in. That's very important that we get some nominations going. I think we have yeah. like five nominations so far. Mm. Of, you know, five forms that are filled categories. out. Categories? Uh, it's like six categories, so it's like 30 figures that have been nominated so oh, far. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, we are raising money for the Susan G. Komen Foundation of San Antonio. Nice. We put up a breast cancer awareness t-shirt. You can see here on StreamYard on the top right, our logo is the... Uh, is this shirt designed? Is it G Komen or B Komen? Uh, I don't know. I think it's G. Look it up real quick. And so what we're going to do is... Uh, so the way that T Public works is if the shirt is $20, I think we make $4 of that 20 And if it's on sale, I think we make like 250 So essentially what I'm going to do is we're going to take whatever we get from this month's uh, T Public which pays out like mid-November, and we're going to match it dollar per dollar, and then we're going to donate it you know, from Collecting Weekly to this foundation. And uh, yeah, uh, Jason, that uh, Collecting Weekly Awards is posted on Ox. It's the, uh, when you scroll down, it's a nomination thread. It's a Google form this thing. It's Susan G. Komen, you are correct. Okay, I was like, I'm almost certain that I'm right. Um, so yeah, double that is our uh, shirt, and uh, you know I, I've been uh, not me personally, but I know family members that have been affected by breast cancer, yeah. and um, we know many others that have been affected by this terrible illness. So you know, want to rate? I mean, we're not going to be raking in thousands of dollars to donate, but you know, if we were able to donate a little bit, that'd be uh, every dollar helps this yeah. uh, foundation. So uh, we will update you guys with how that goes. Uh, we are raising money to fund uh, just a few more upgrades that we need for our studio setup. We're selling some hats. we got some hats here on the table. Uh, let's go to full screen. We're also selling this Mandalorian figure right here. No, that's my Mandalorian figure. These are $30 shipped. That's anywhere in the United States, continental United States. Uh, we have some dad hats. We have some flat brim hats. We have some Velcro hats. Uh, and, yeah, every dollar that uh, we sell these hats goes 100% into hosting and upgrades we spent about uh 800 in upgrades over the past two weeks and um it was all funded but we do have uh you know a little bit i do want to give some of the guys some money back because some people donated very generously yeah and um also we just have expenses coming up you know postage and the like for different things that we've been doing. We're, we're actually mailing out Dean tomorrow. Uh, Clint Rambo won our Taste of Texas giveaway. Nice. Uh, I I tried to... Uh, Clint, if you're listening, just stop listening. But there was one of the Fiesta Spices that I was really looking for. He told me he makes a lot of brisket. And I could not find the brisket rub. I went to like three different HEBs, went to Walmart. I ended up just finally having to get it. And, and everything's going out tomorrow. Manny... Well, I don't want to ruin it. But Manny pitched in. Uh, and all the guys pitched in to send you a nice little care package from Collecting Weekly. Uh, these are some of the examples of the colors that we have. I think most of these have been sold already. I know Ian and Pete grabbed the tan ones. Greg grabbed the red one. I think we might have a white and a black one. So some of these have gone already, but we definitely want to make sure we uh, sell all of these to um, really pimp out our studio setup. We have Only Fools in Collecting recording this Thursday, episode three, Let Loose. Um I'm not sure why they chose this artwork, but it's fantastic. I really wish Ian would have photoshopped his face under Dr. Evil. That would have been amazing. Uh, Live and learn, boy. But yeah, so they're recording episode three. They're on a roll. 
Uh, Dylan and Damien also just put out like episode eight, I think, of their show. Nice. Uh, episode nine, maybe. But they they put out a really good show. I'm uh, just finishing it up, and I gotta say, Damien's got a swagger about him in this episode. He's really, he's really getting it. In the stride. He's really, he's really in his stride. I mean, the first few collecting weeklies were. Yeah. Uh, we don't talk about those. Yeah, they're almost you, you, you hit, you hit the, Well, literally, my iPad was not very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're everyone's hitting their stride, and you know, everyone's hitting the target numbers that we we like them to hit. So you're. You can find us on Facebook at Collecting Weekly Auxiliary. It is a wonderful group, dude. Uh, it's we so have much fun. we have so much fun there all we, day. We are going. I I know I'm a little late on this, but I I fell. Uh, seriously ill, the most ill that I've been in a while. Yeah, usually about once a year I get a really nasty cold. I've been like, I've been very minorly sick throughout the year, but like I'm always good to record. Uh. But this one, man, I lost my voice, and and it did not help that we did about eight hours of mic tests that week before you and I were you came over like four days in a yeah. row, and it just did not help to be ill doing mic checks and then. Yeah, I I completely lost my voice. I, yeah, because literally I, in the middle of the last show, I lost my voice. Like, it yeah, just, I remember because I bought this mic and I was like, I really need to test it. And I was like, dude, I can't. And you're like, dude, I really need to test this so I can return it. And you're like, oh, I'm sick. I was like, I'll risk it. Like, I don't. Care. You didn't get sick though, right? No, I didn't get sick. Yeah, good for you, man. Um, Dean, I have a really important shout out to give, and you know, like. We've built up a pretty good relationship with Six Scale Scavengers, Brian and Chris, mm-hmm. uh, TC, Roy, Steve, Matt. They're wonderful people. And um, I think it was yesterday, maybe it was yesterday, I got one of the greatest messages that I have ever received. I'm a little in on this. I already know about this. Yeah, in my life. Now, um, Zach... Venable uh, from Indian Steelbox Media put together Mosquito League. A, that is unconfirmed. Put oh. together <laughs> a um, <laughs> put together a video of other collectors, and essentially it was like it was a fantastic video. It was like I really he gave it. us a list of five questions, and it was really weird because he's like, "Just answer these questions," and I was like, "Do I need an intro?" Like, because when someone gives you a list of questions, like I made it a video that could stand on its own. With production and everything. Uh, but he was just cutting those clips together. So, like, right, right. question one, all five people answer. Question two, so everyone's video was kind of, like, shuffled together. Right. It was fantastic. Now, part of the discussion was, uh, what is your grail figure? And my grail figure was the Mark 46. I sold it when my daughter had to go to the emergency room. It was a very hefty bill. Right. Uh, insurance is not something that... Uh, we have insurance, but it's not great. Right. And so um, I sold it. This was at a time where uh, you would be hard-pressed to sell a Mark 46 at retail, and I needed the money fast, so I sold it for like 280 Two months later, it was like a $700 figure, and now it's like a $1,200 figure. And Chris, the beautiful angel, Monday morning, a gift from God said, hey, man, I'm toying with the idea of getting rid of my Mark 46 to fund my new Star Wars addiction. I was going to list it today, but I thought I'd give you a shot. And I'm thinking, like, fuck. This is terrible timing. Yeah. And he went on to say, like, you know, the devil on the shoulder wants wants you to sell it to just anyone for as much as you can get it for. Right. Chris, being the absolute wonderful human being he was, was like, I'll sell, I'll, I'll sell it to you for retail, which is like a, a third to a fourth of what this figure is going for. Right. And so, um, great offer, but again, not a great time. Right. Um, but Chris was like, hey, my one of my co-hosts, Steve, who hosts uh, Avengers, uh, Scavengers Assemble, rather. Uh, he was Avengers Assemble was was looking for Han and Chewie, and so essentially we were able to work out like a like I paid nothing essentially just basically sold the figures to uh, Steve and then I was able to get the forty six, and it was such he, he shipped the figure today but it's like it almost doesn't feel real 
to know that I'm getting my grail back. Not yeah. the exact figure, but... And you haven't shipped Han or Chewie, so you can just hold on to them. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, no, of course not. Those guys are awesome. Uh, and it's just like... And it's weird because Sunday night, I was cleaning up in the living room. Baby was asleep. Victoria was asleep. I was just doing some cleaning. And I found my Civil War steelbook. And I'm thinking, like, I'm just going to sell this thing. Like, I'm never going to get the Mark 46. And I get really salty about movies. Like, I don't watch a movie if I want the figure. Remember, I didn't watch Dragon Ball Super for the longest time because I didn't have Beerus and Whis. Mm-hmm. I'm very weird. Like, I just I can't enjoy it because the whole movie, I'm just like, fuck, I want that figure. And so I watched Civil War on Monday because it's coming. And I'm so happy. Now, now this figure has a very interesting backstory. If you listen to one of their uh, episodes, it's like maybe from three months ago. Brian Fontaine, the host, the uh, one of the hosts of Six Sale Scavengers, the host, um, got this figure from retail like three months ago at Big Bad Toy Store. Randomly, it was on their website. It was a damaged box. I think it was actually below retail. And he had gotten it without thinking, what am I going to do with it? Sold it to Chris for retail, and then Chris is paying it forward to me. And Han and Chewie are not cheap figures, you know? And uh, I was able to give a deal to Steve, kind of like paying it forward again. Yeah. And And I'm of the belief, like, if you're a good person, if you take care of others like maybe not all the time but sometimes like the, the universe, universe will throw you a bone yeah for sure and you know like when i sell you a figure or on the groups or i always try to give people like a really good deal yeah always yeah i've said that on the show too it's like i had the figure i enjoyed it i don't need to make a profit on something every time yeah you know sometimes it's nice you know you need the money but yeah it's like, hey, I paid 20 bucks for it. You know, just a regular scenario. I had it. I enjoyed it. You can have it for 10. Like, yeah. Just... Now, this would not have been possible if it wasn't for my boy Dean. That's right. Although, I kind of I was really mad at you for like five seconds earlier. And so, so I had Han and Shui, but I had parted out the bases. Right. And unfortunately, I still had. Because the, the A New Hope line, all the good guys were, like, on a certain base, and the bad guys were, like, on a red base. Right. So I had the nameplate for Han and Chewie. I just didn't have the bases. So I found one base at home. It was from, I think it was, like, Obi-Wan or something like that. And uh, I had that figure a long time ago. I sold them, but I kept the base because I needed it for whatever. Okay. And um, I messaged you, and I was like, dude, like, this deal is almost going to happen, but the hang-up is the base. And I don't have the money to buy... A base. I mean, it's like 35 bucks. But it's right. Like, That's a lot. For a do you base. have a base you're going to grab with? Funny enough, you had the base that yeah, I sold first to I Rainer. Like, I was like, no, dude, I, I really I don't. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, I do. Uh, no, Rainer still has that base. Oh, okay. I had bought a New Hope Luke from Rainer, which was yeah. your old figure. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I don't know, like a few months before, our buddy Albert yeah. gave me a New Hope Luke, but... Like, missing a few parts. Yeah, the, the figure was gone, but it had, like, the shirt, the pants, everything in it. And yeah. I was like, I still have that stand, I think. Yeah. Now, the thing that really... That, that was pissed off at you today is because when we were talking, you, you tend to joke with me about these things. Uh-huh. But I was like, I need the base, I need the stand, I need the crotch grabber. And you're like, Zach, stop it. I have it. Don't worry about it. And then you called me, like, right when you're about to leave me, like, dude, I don't have the crotch grabber. It wasn't it. And I'm like, I was like, wow, <laughs> Dean, like, I, this is why I tried to confirm yesterday. Fortunately, I have uh, I have a crotch grabber. I just didn't have the base and the little peggy bit that goes into the yeah, into the base. But that's my crotch grabber. Yeah, I have a, a crotch grabber. So I'll just take mine back? Perhaps. <laughs> or keep that one. Well, no. well, you gave it to me. So, I mean, I was like, well, I'm to give it back to you. I could just have an extra crotch grabber. I got <laughs> You probably have a stand over here somewhere. Over How many, there? Dean? I've given you like twenty stands no, in our friendship. Not true. I, that is a damn lie. The last time you were here, like two, two, three times ago, you're like, "Hey, can I have the stand?" You know, you might as well tell Brian and Chris that the deal's off because oh. I'm taking my stand. You're being no. an asshole right now. I'm just kidding, <laughs> Dean. Do you need? I can't give you the digital code because I bought it for Ian. But do you need Far From Home? Yeah. I'm gonna hook you up with it. Nice. Hook you up with it because you're my bro. Nice. Made my dream come true. 
What you gonna do to make a dream come true? Give um, this guy a metal stand, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's my shout out. Chris Letty really hooked it up big time. I know we got, went on a huge tangent there, but yeah, Chris, yeah. thank you so much. Steve, thank you so much. Both of y'all shows but, are hella dope. Yeah, all those guys. I, dude, I really want to get Matt on here. Dude. Matt is such a cool dream. fucking dude. Matt is like an angel. Okay. I, let One me of just, the nicest human beings. Let me just say this. Unboxing videos are boring as hell, usually. Yeah. The second I see Matt streaming an unboxing, I'm like, I'm in. Like, yeah. I'll, I sit there the whole time because he good. talks to his, the people on there. He communicates. He, he shows what he's got. He talks about what the figure comes with and why he doesn't like it or the pros and cons. It's just very entertaining. Um, I don't know if I'm just used to like YouTube unboxings where <laughs> they're just like, here it is. Da, 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 okay, bye. His are entertaining as hell. And he's I, got a rare talent for that. He's also extremely knowledgeable. So if I bring up an old figure, he'll be like, oh, yeah. And he'll be able to elaborate on what I was talking about. Yeah. So it'd be really nice to get him on StreamYard and shoot the shit. It would be pretty cool. And his last stream was like, dude, you got to come on the podcast. He's like, all right. I was like, I'll talk to Zach. Dude, he's got my dream mic set up too. The Shure SM7B with a cloud lifter. Oh goals right there i know i wish we had the the ones you can move around yeah on the, the arms maybe those are pretty cool because i like to lean back but obviously the audio quality suffers but if i move up it's fine well we just have to learn good mic discipline dean yeah i have the the stand i could put up the next one for you next time oh okay. i just didn't know what you wanted okay it's our first episode with the xlrs we gotta learn yeah this is great Anyways, guys, if you have some friends that uh, are into collecting, let us know about let them know about our podcast. Rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Pick up some swag. Pick up some hats. Pick up some uh, t-shirts. Whatever we're donating, one hundred percent of all of our t-shirt sales plus one hundred percent to uh, a very good cause. So yeah. we haven't are, shirt, we haven't sold any shirts yet. So. Are we coming up on the end of the show? Yes. Because I did a thing. You did a thing? <laughs> I, I didn't bring it up on new this week, but I did a thing. What'd you do? I'm going to show you. I'm not going to say what it is. Oh, oh, I, might, I might say what it is, but here's a receipt. Read that. Well, first off, I don't know what this funny money is. It says you paid... It's yen. Okay, 42428 JPY to Amiami. What is it, like 420 bucks? Yeah, okay. just about. Look at me. Yeah, dude, good Get job. Your boy. It was actually like four even. Or okay. 409 after uh, shipping. What'd you get? One of my grails. The Soul of Chagogan. VF1J. Rick Hunter? Rick Hunter. Dude. I I cannot wait for this fucking thing. So that I, was that was Amiami. Remind me, that's like a you, people can sell things used. Yeah, and, and yours was used. Yeah, so I was eyeing a used one, and it, and like one day it just vanished. I was like, shit, I missed it. Mm -hmm. And then like the next payday I got, I went on there. There was another one, and I didn't skip a beat, dude. I just bought it. Is that a good price? For that thing. Yeah, they're usually uh, either at four hundred uh, or like upwards of six on eBay. Not bad, dude. And so, that will be in next week or the week after. Oh, dude, I'm, it just left customs earlier today, <clears throat> so I'm hoping, um, like by Friday. Nice. Or even Thursday. So I'll have it next week. On Ooh. new this week. I'm so stoked, dude. But, I, dude, all I've been doing for the, like, I don't remember when you posted that thing, but all I've been doing is Robotech. Isn't, isn't it funny? I know we're at the end of the show, but we're just going to go on for a few more minutes. Yeah. Isn't it funny how that works? Like, someone posted, God, it was like, maybe in May, something about Dragon Ball Z. Mm. And that got me hard into dragon ball z yeah someone posted something about spider-man and that's all i could think about for like a month two months isn't that funny how that works yeah i posted about just scrolling through big bad toy store found like some random thing that i once wanted 
and it has gotten you reinvigorated your love for Robotech. Robotech. Yeah. Isn't that funny how that yeah, works? That's so neat. It's I just I can't thank you enough. Or although I should be mad at you because I'm spending all this money, but yeah, I um I rewatched the show, the movies, and the show's actually really funny. Um it's actually three completely different shows that have nothing to do with each other. Mm-hmm. But the guy who brought Matt Cross over um <clears throat> brought two other unrelated shows over and wrote them into one story Mm. by, you know, like, oh, this is so-and-so's son, or, you know, just like, with clever writing, was able to turn three shows into one. Yeah. So Matt Cross and the the Sentinels, I forgot the name of the third show, but that's all Robotech here in the States. So a lot of people don't like Robotech. Yeah, I love Robotech because Rick Hunter and Lisa Hayes and Min May. That's actually her name in the Mad Cross too. But oh man, it's just so fantastic, dude. That sounds badass. Uh, Southtown Pain Apps in the chat wanted the link to buy the shirt. I put it in the comments. So again, 100 percent plus 100 percent of whatever we sell shirts wise, will donate. So cool beans. Anyways, guys, I'm Zach. I'm Dean. Catch you guys on the next episode. Bye.